Hello Internet, Retro Kevin here. In today's video we're going to be modifying a Super Nintendo's red LED light. I'll be showing you how to replace it with any color of your choice. I will be using a color changing LED. So let's head over to the workbench and see what we have today. This is the SNES we'll be working with. And that's the LED I'm talking about. So let's open it up and get to the good stuff. We'll have six screws that will need the 4.5mm security screwdriver. I'll have a link down in the description for a small kit that contains one if you need it. Let's not forget our bin. Carefully flip the council over to collect all of our screws. Yeah, that last one just doesn't want to come out. So we'll just lift the top of the case and push the screw out from the inside. Huh, I don't see it. So it probably fell out. <laughs> yep, there it is. Okay, I see something here that worries me a little bit. See that rust? And the white residue on the board? This has some water damage in it for sure. Now I did test it before filming to make sure that it works. So I'll worry about that for another video. Let's get back to the task at hand. We'll take the game injector and the spring out and set them off to the side. Pull the controller to ribbon cable out of the motherboard. And the controller port will just come right out. We'll set the rest of the console off to the side for now. Now let's get that ribbon cable out of our way here. I'm just checking to see how it goes in. I always forget this when putting it back together. That's the LED lens, I think we can call it. Pretty sure it's there to focus the light out of the console and to protect the LED as well. Now there's four clips holding this front plate in. We'll use a small flathead screwdriver to help us here. I like to get that lens out and set it aside so I don't lose it. Now the other side. It'll normally come off without having to get that last clip. And set it out of our way. Here we see our red LED will be removing. Sadly, just desoldering these two joints will not be enough. We will have to desolder all of these. If you're like me and don't have a desoldering station or anything like that, a bit of flux and a desoldering wire will do the trick. We don't need too much flux. And here's the wire I'll be using. Now we're going to be careful not to overheat the board. That can cause the solder pads to lift up or completely come off. Clean our soldering iron after every use. And that looks good. These next ones are going to take a bit, so I'll just cut to when I'm done. Okay, quick note. You'll want to be careful with that hot iron around these plastic clips. Doesn't take much to melt them. Okay, I have all of the pins desoldered from the board. Here we'll use a pair of needle nose pliers to get both of those clips at once. We'll also pull the board away as we're squeezing those clips. First one, no problem. This side just doesn't want to let go. Probably still have a little bit of solder on one of those pins. Got it. 
but I don't like that slip up there. You can see I put a little scratch on the board. It won't be an issue, but that's why I always stress being careful when doing this kind of stuff. Anyway, now we can remove our old LED. And we'll clean our board up with some isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab. This will take a few swabs to be completely clean. I'm going to clean the other side as well. Now here is our new LED. As you can see, one of the leads is a little longer than the other. That is the positive, the shorter being the negative. The markings on the board will show us which way to put the LED in. See how it looks like a little arrow pointing to the right? We'll make sure the positive goes in the left there. I'm going to leave a little bit of space between the LED and the board, as this LED is smaller than the original. Once we have around where we want it, we can go ahead and bend the leads on the other side of the board so it doesn't move around too much while we're soldering it back in. Out of habit, I bend the leads away from each other. We'll want it to look something like that. A little closer to the board wouldn't hurt, but this will work. Now we'll trim the excess leads off, being careful not to scratch the board again. Next, we can prop our board up a little for the soldering. Add a small amount of flux. We don't need a lot of solder. A little goes a long ways. Just gonna touch this side up. All right, looks good. I'm going to clean these controller pins up before resoldering them on. Line our board up the correct way and snap them back together. Before going too far, we'll test to make sure that lens fits over the LED okay. Perfect. Well, my fingers are a little sticky from that flux. Now we'll add a little flux to all of our pins. And working with a clean, freshly tinned soldering iron. Shake off the excess. For stuff like this, I like to add the solder to my iron, then bring it to the board. It keeps us from using too much. Again, make sure to watch out for those plastic clips. Once we're done, we'll clean our soldering iron again and retin it before putting it away. If you can see, I like to leave a little extra on before putting it away. Now we'll clean up our solder joints with a little more alcohol and a swab. Next, replace the lens and that front plate. That should just snap right on. Let's put that ribbon cable back in. <laughs> and I forgot which way it goes. There we go. Writing on the cable goes on the outside. Reconnect that to the main board. Again, that rust is bugging me. I'll clean that up in another video. 
Yeah, I hear you. I forgot the game injector, but we won't need it just for testing. Insert a game and power on. It'll start off red, but we'll soon start cycling through the different colors. I think that looks pretty cool. Alright, now let's reassemble the console and do a playtest. Here's that game ejector you thought I forgot about. These can be a little tricky to get back in. I find it helps to put the spring in first. It can take some time. Let's stick with it. You'll get it. Perfect. Top of the case goes back on. Putting back in the six 4.5 millimeter security screws. Careful not to torque them down too tight. The plastic is pretty brittle after all of these years. Let's hook it up to a TV and do a play test. It will take about 40 seconds to cycle through all of the colors. There we go. Using an LED that only costs a few cents, and some soldering skills, we can mod out our SNES to have any color light we want. I hope you liked this video. If you really enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe, as it will really help out me and the channel quite a lot. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you next time.